Welcome to Pierce Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we're here for another Monday mini sode. That's right. A Monday mini, and we are going into uh, you know, the holiday seasons here. And one of the beautiful things about the holiday season, other than the pie and uh the the turkey and the ham and the presents and all those things are the sales that you're going to be getting. And we love our Q4 sales. But one of the things that come up with Q4 is shipping. And especially because a lot of the things you ship in Q4 might not be your normal bread and butter items. It might be some stuff you've kind of, you know, had to branch out a little bit, some some new niches you've gotten into or some seasonal things. And a lot of that stuff can be fragile. People want to get in pristine condition. So we're going to be talking over the next two Monday minis on how to ship safely, how to make sure that your items get to your customers so that they can have a great holiday season and you can have that money and not get those returns from damaged items. And these are going to be super practical mini-sodes. Sometimes we get comments like, hey, can you make one really practical on how to ship something? Or can you make one on how to, you know, get the best best price for something or or something to that effect? And what happens is, you know, we get very theoretical, right? A lot lot of reselling channels right now, especially when things are interesting, they get really theoretical, right? How to how to get more sales or or how to beat the algorithm, right? It's it's all theory. Well, these are real you know, down to earth situations that should hopefully help you not have to deal with the drama of getting a message of this hundred dollar item broke or this five hundred dollar item broke and then having to file insurance. And most of the time your insurance claims will get denied now. I find that that's part of a down economy is that they are very more careful to just easily give you that money. And so Every tip that we give you is for the intention of that. Hey, you're shipping out something hoping to never get it damaged. So the That's first right. one, which is the easiest one, and and this is something that gets overlooked, is you got to have all your supplies beforehand. You know, you don't want to cut corners when you're shipping, especially during Q4. And what do I mean by that? Sometimes you run out of supply and you're like, you know what? I won't use that much bubble wrap because I only have so much left. Broken item. Or I'm not going to float this box because I only have so many boxes, broken item. And if you're wondering what we mean by floating a box, you should just, you know, go to YouTube search and put Pierce a podcast floating a box and you'll get to know what we're talking about. Or sometimes you're like, oh, you know, this item probably it would be really good if I can use an Instapack from American Bubble Boy and you don't have it. So you're like, I'm just going to use some packing paper. But you really needed something that would secure something you know, nicely in a box. And so what happens is you cut the corner because you don't have the supplies or you end up in a scenario where you spend two or three hours trying to find that supply because, you know, things are super busy and it's Q4. And let's say you go to your big box retailer and you're like, oh, I just need to get this box real quick. And next thing you know, you're spending an hour in lines. You're spending a half hour in the parking lot. You don't want to do that during this Q4. And you don't want to cut corners because it's going to lead to damaged items. So make sure... Uh, that you have all the items that you need beforehand. Yeah, that's great. Um, Going on to our next one is when you have the items you need, it comes down to actually packing. And one of the things you really want to make sure is that your item is not going to be moving inside of the box, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, uh, but you've got to make sure that when you've got your box floated or your item inside of the box, that there's not a little bit of wiggle room because you might think, oh, this is pretty snug. But if there's a little bit of of room to move in one direction or the other, uh, one of the things that can happen is it's going to move back and forth quite a bit. It's going to start rattling. Um, as you know, when when things go through shipping, there's going to be a little bit of shift anyway, so that that paper you're using might compress. And so that little maybe like half inch of space is now turned into a full inch of space, which can be quite a bit of movement. And if you've got small pieces inside rattling back and forth like that, there's a good chance you can end up with something broken or a box damaged, right? So if you're shipping, you know, toys in a box and one of the pieces are coming out and it's rattling in there or uh, CDs inside of something, you know how like, you know, the CDs come out of a case Mm -hmm. and now they're going around on the inside, scratching up, right? You got to make sure that you don't have that happening with any of your items. So you want to make sure that you can pretty much move it in every direction, give it a little shake. And if it's not moving, it's not budging, then you know you're good to go. If there's a little bit of rattle back and forth, uh, unless you're shipping something like a, a stuffed animal, there's a good chance that that item could get broken. And again, this is stuff we know on a normal basis. And a lot of times it doesn't matter so much if there's some movement, but when it's Christmas stuff, 
people are more concerned about things arriving in great condition because a lot of times it's going to be a gift for somebody else. If they get it and they're like, oh, this piece came out of the corner of the package, no big deal. I'm going to open it up and it's fine. But they're not going to want to necessarily wrap that and give it to somebody else. You're going to have an upset customer. Yeah. So for example, you had mentioned about like CDs or video games, right? It come, pops out of the case and starts scratching. And there's there might be other things. You know, like for example, I had uh, sold a, a little mini toolbox and in it, there was like little pieces to the tool and then there was a main tool. Well, it was fine, you know, on my shelf. But once I started shaking a little bit, all the pieces are moving everywhere and it would have scratched the inside of the toolbox, which, you know, it's, it's a tool. Some people don't care, but some people want it to look good still. Right. And so you don't want that damage or you're sending in uh, an item that has multiple pieces. Let's say it's a Department 56 and there's all the little figurines in there and it might have been fine on your shelf before you packed it, but even just a little piece of packing paper in there or bubble wrap to keep that item nice and tight is going to go a long way. And and also I want to uh, address the idea that, you know, just because it's not moving isn't everything because you want to make sure it's not moving because there's protection around it, right? Because sometimes people will put something in a box and it's right up to the edge of the box, right? And there's no padding between the edge of the box and the item. And all it takes is one whack and the item will break. So make sure that you have enough padding around it for it to work out. Now, this is one that I've learned recently <laughs> uh, and I, I've always been OK. But if you're selling clothes, make sure that the item is either one, not packed too tight. So then if people want to use scissors to cut it open, they don't accidentally cut the item. And, and, and again, if that happens, that's their fault, right? You shouldn't lose. But then you still have got to deal with the whole issue of they may open a case. They may leave you feedback. You never know these days. And it's interesting every time on Instagram when I post uh, something about, you know, uh, buyers now are leaving neutral feedback because they don't like the bubble wrap or they don't like the way it's, it's packaged. Like, you got to be careful about that. So either you leave a little bit room. So if you, you know, you have a sweater and, and we're so used to. Uh, at least myself on a padded priority, like I'll shove that sweater in there and it's like taped, but like it, there's no, there's, there's no way of getting to that item. Right. Unless like you really, you're, you have to like kind of rip it open. So if that's the case, you want to put a note on there that says, do not cut or do not cut open. Right. Just so you're, you're protecting yourself, you're protecting your inventory. And again, with the argument can be made, well, that's on the buyer. That's true. But do you really want to lose the time back and forth messaging, trying to figure out what's going on? You just want to make sure you cut all your all your bases, especially you cover all your bases. You cut you cover all your bases, and then uh, you know, for example, if it's a really expensive item. So for example, I just shipped out a vintage uh, Disney shirt for, that was worth uh, two hundred fifty dollars. I didn't ship that in a padded envelope, just because my fear was it gets caught on a conveyor belt, it gets you know torn somehow. A dog starts gnawing on it on the front porch. You don't want to deal with that. So that one, I just ended up putting in a mailer and then I put it inside a box and I put some padded paper because, hey, I might have lost a buck or two, but the peace of mind and the time I save is well worth it. Yeah, that's right. Especially when you consider, um, you know, like you said, if maybe put it in a box if it's a really nice item, like a jacket or something you don't want to get messed up inside of like a poly mailer. The other thing you could do is still keep it in the poly mailer because a lot of people will use a razor blade or their key to cut across the top of, of the box where your tape is. And if you have just that little extra barrier between mm -hmm. where their, their knife or scissors could be and the item, uh, you'd be surprised. A poly mailer could be that thing that prevents it from getting sliced. It might cut or at least kind of snag on it. And then now you're not cutting that really expensive jacket or shirt. So yeah, that extra protection from items getting cut is really, really useful. Um, the next thing you want to do, especially if you've got, um, what comes to mind for me is like, uh, I've sold big cameras or different types of equipment like that is don't be afraid to break the item down into parts and then to flow each part separately or to wrap each part separately. Uh, cause a lot of times this is going to do two things. One, it's going to help the, the items fit inside of your box better. Um, you know, you've got a component of some kind, you could take some pieces off of it. Um, maybe you've got like a, a music box, right? And you could take the top off of it. You could take the side off of it, wrap those separately. You know, the part that's got the really expensive, fragile stuff that might need to have special attention done for that. And then that could be floated separately from the actual wooden box part, which is going to be a little bit sturdier. Um, so 
it's going to help you a lot if you break your pieces down, if possible. Of course, don't break items. Don't ruin something that's not meant to come apart. But things like cameras where you can take lenses off of, uh, things where you can kind of break down parts. Um, you know, I just think about I when I moved here, we bought some end tables and they actually came fully assembled. And the amount of... Um, they did such a great job packing it. Like I was amazed when I opened this thing up, they wrapped every single individual piece. They had like hard wood in there to like keep the box like rigid. And I'm thinking, man, this would have been so much easier for them to ship in pieces. They could have kept it protected, but it would have been a lot of work for me. So I was appreciative that it was put together, but people expect that, you know, you expect when you get certain items that they're going to, you're going to have to have some assembly required because it's going to be easier to ship the items. If it's not assembled, it's going to protect the item and it's going to fit into boxes uh, easier. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I, I, for example, you know, easy one for me was uh, a cookie jar I just sent out. And I could have, you know, taped it together a little bit or I could have just put the bowl wrap together and make sure it's nice and tight. But even if it moved a little bit, right, it could have like chipped off a part. It was better to just separate it, bubble wrap both of them, uh, you know, float both of them inside the box and it arrives safely without a problem. All right. And so this this last one. Uh, that we're going to talk about today and make sure to you know hit that bell notification and smash that like button uh so our, you don't miss our next one that drops because these are youtube exclusives is the idea of protecting corners most of the damage that i find whether it be a vcr or a dvd player uh, i do ship out some art sometimes that aren't anything that's framed uh any anything that has a corner that could break i just shipped out uh tony gwynn plaque uh that somebody wanted uh, for decoration corners are where things can get easily destroyed because you know the, the center of an item right chances are of that getting hit or, or getting you know jostled very slim to none but a corner of a box you know a box is dropped a lot of the times it's going to hit a corner and you want to make sure you put extra padding on that corner extra bubble wrap uh because if, for example when i when i send artwork out uh the glass usually it's in glass right it's already framed uh, and so when I do that, I make sure that I end up the co corners are super, super padded because if they're not and let's say it hits something, that whole glass will shatter inside of there. And you don't want that to happen, uh, you know, on a VCR or a DVD player or a record player. Corners are super important because if you break that corner, it could cause a lot of other damage to the item inside. So make sure that corners are protected. Uh, make sure that you're not just putting just, you know, one or two layers and you're putting in a box and those one or two layers are the only thing that are separating uh, your item from the cardboard and then the outside world. You want to make sure that it's super padded to keep things safe. So hopefully all these help. Did you want to add any more there, Mike? Did I cover that? No, one? I think that's good. Yeah. So I know, you know, this was short, but tune in for part two. We want to make sure that every single item gets there and gets there safely so you can keep profits. And with that being said, make sure to be real. Be relevant and be reselling. Please. Peace.